did your footsteps into working with medicines more and more also intertwine with a growing la- uh, uh, a growing interest in history? Mm. Like, um, how did those two things start to come together? You know, I think I think that the the way that they they kind of fit together it really was put together so well in the ancient secret of the flower of life which contained everything Mm -hmm. because i read the history story of atlantis in there and i wanted to animate it i also learned about how it fits into the bigger picture and the the awakening that we're going through today with i mean you know with the psychedelics and the the hippie lsd 60s you know and everything that happened then like it was it was all put together in a complete picture so i kind of got the picture first mm-hmm. and that deepened my understanding and and then also compelled me to want to be a part of it i guess you know like learn more about the history read more of the ancient stuff because i was raised in the world where you know i got the traditional western understanding of history and i slept through a lot of my history class honestly like it was yeah, always the, it was always the earliest class in the morning and like my teacher <laughs> bless his heart he let me sleep so the first half of the class i had it right <laughs> face, face down in my desk and they were just like yeah just let them do that mm-hmm. it's all good <laughs> and so um you know i i wasn't really i didn't really like the i didn't really care so much about the his, historical stuff until all of the spiritual awakening and then i was suddenly interested in everything right. and i wanted to know the, the actual truth so i would learn history from the perspective of say the chinese or the japanese or the the Muslims and then the, you know, the Christians and the Orthodoxy and then the, the Catholic, you know, kind of how they fit together and then the Greek and then the, you know, all of these different pictures and trying to understand how they fit together. Even, you know, going back older than that, the Sumerians and the Egyptians and looking at the, you know, the Gobekli Tepe and these mm-hmm. ancient sites and the, you know, the ruins in Africa that show that humans were doing stuff over there. Maybe they're gold mines from 25 or sorry, 250,000 years ago. Mm. There's like a lot of strange anomalies in our history that don't really seem to fit in the picture of the puzzle. And that was where I wanted to, I, I just put my focus of study. And that's kind of where the Sumerian epic came from. That was one of my, my biggest projects. It's still kind of ongoing. But I, you know, we had the story of this, like the Anunnaki and Nibiru and the, all of these things. And I wanted to go and read the actual Enuma Elish, the actual translations of this, the cuneiform Sumerian tablets and then animate it and tell that story and wow. see, is there validity to mm-hmm. the story of Nibiru and the story of the Anunnaki and this and that? Like, let's find out. I'm not claiming it is, you know, because with the human history movie originally, it was like, this is the way that it is because I was just essentially animating it from the text, not necessarily, I wasn't approaching it with that, like, it's very analytical, yeah. even doubtful. You know, like a you, you were kind minded. of you were kind of taking in information and kind of regurgitating it out for uh, an audience in, uh, using yeah. your own voice. Correct, but you hadn't fully immersed yourself in order to create a perspective that maybe sidesteps all of the things you were learning, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 adds to it. I I've received a lot of criticism from the spirit science audience from that in the in the very beginning because I wasn't asking as many detailed ah, questions as I might have needed okay. to yeah. in order to get the best perspective. Yeah. And so the Sumerian epic was an assen- essentially a, a way for me to put another good foot, a better foot forward as far as the history goes and say, look, I don't know. I'm not claiming to have all the answers that the Anunnaki are real or what their role was if they are real in our history. But here's what the texts say and here's the evidence and decide for yourself. Here's ways that it the story fits. Mm-hmm. Here's ways that maybe it doesn't so much. You know, a lot of the ideas came from Zechariah Sitchin um, about Nibiru and the Anunnaki, and maybe some of it's true, but maybe some of it's a little bit off base. And um, but people still may believe in it or not otherwise. And I I wanted to make a a con you know a series or create some content that could provide clarity to the truth of the whole of the story. Yeah, you know. Yeah. That's awesome because yeah. that didn't exist before you did it. It didn't. Yeah, it didn't. And I, I went before spirit science existed. I went out onto the internet and I tried to find people talking about this kind of stuff, and I barely found anything. And so even in the very first episode of spirit science, I was like, I want more people to talk about it with. Yeah, you know. And 
probably with that voice too. I'm like, uh-huh. yeah. Hey, everybody. I don't know what is going on, but I want more people to talk about spirituality with. So here we go. And from that point, I mean, it, it grew up so fast and then now it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, now, yeah. now you, there's no shortage of the spiritual stuff. Everyone's talking right. about it. Yeah. Watch the full episode of the Good Trip podcast using the link in the description. Enjoy. Enjoy.